we uh, record on this computer. That'll be fine. Okay, so it's being recorded now. Now we're recording. All right, I'll go back to sharing. We'll pick up where we were. And where was I? Oh, right here. Okay. All right, move you guys back down to the bottom of the screen. Move this down to the center so you can see it. And we're moving on. Okay, no more comments about this. Anybody wanted to say anything other that we did not include yet? Nothing. Nothing. Nobody said anything. Okay, so this one, oh yeah, this one was kind of interesting too. Huh. Look at that. Yeah, That's so awesome. this this kind of re is reminds me of uh, uh, NFT type sort of stuff. Um, a little bit but digital in that way but nice nice simple graphics and then of course you can see the drop shadow mm -hmm. behind where he yeah. put his name here so to make sure it's there but then his initials too and then which is kind of nice that he has the two eyes in there because we just saw that same idea with the previous one with they put the eye and the mouth in there and it seems like uh, people want to make their logos into living things or or at least interactive the possibility of interaction so anyway those are done with drop shadows right and probably um because they look like this one's these are further away from from their from the source so he, he uh, highlighted those individual objects and made them move the drop shadow further away in order to emphasize the idea that they're eyes but it is a nice simple lr rl whatever i uh, would be last name first rl but good and uh very geometric and um yeah very it's it's structural to me um erector set ish but also super digital because everything's square so that's why i said nft because i'm thinking of the uh the little nft uh characters that are all digitized like in an invaders little um uh, creatures that he makes that are super digital and based on fractal pixels back in the old days i remember when when uh, um, apple first came out with their um with their computers back in i guess uh uh 1980s or something 1981 and i remember going to an art gallery and they had them there and they apple um representatives were there letting us work on the, the computers and making graphics and they were so bad they were super pixelated huge pixels and it was it looked it looked like pac-man um but but they of course that developed into what we're using now and that was just the start of it and they were saying at the time oh yeah no this is going to be definitely what's happening in the future and i looked at it and said this is not working very well at all. It doesn't look that great. I, I just don't see that yet. But obviously it did work. And it was all about making the pixels smaller and smaller and, and more memory and so forth. So anybody else want to say anything about this? I really like it. And would you do anything about color? Do you have any issues with the color? No, like I really like gray? it just as it is. I think it's yeah, awesome. So, so the gray shadow and the gray um, object work really well. Now you notice also that he has a little highlight here around this to make sure that that's isolated from that shadow so that you can see it so that there's a, yeah. a, a slight highlight. Otherwise, you wouldn't see that. So without that important little delicate, um, really, that actually comes from moving the shadow away from it, though, so that it's far enough away so that it's leaving a highlight or a gap for where the shadow is cast on the background. But without that little highlight area, it wouldn't be as effective. Then those two gray areas, the gray shadow and the gray text or the gray, the content inside the text would merge together and it wouldn't be as powerful. So it's a really subtle thing. And these small little lines also mimic these lines here that are so tiny and delicate, but um, sort of like what you would do if you were a draftsman and uh, putting in uh, lines as an engineer or something. Really delicate, subtle, but precise. Also, just the, just the, the very fact on the R, 
you know, the slant of it, and then combined with the shadow in the back, it makes it look like it's three dimensional, like it's popping out, almost like leaning toward you. Oh, so yeah. It kind of crosses between is this an R or is this like a little face on a stick kind of coming towards you? And it, it's very interesting. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it is. And, and yeah, I do like you mean right on that stick, like a lollipop coming at you? Yeah. You no. Know? Um, yeah, that three dimensional quality plays a huge role in this. And it's so simple and subtle, but it's super effective. Now, uh, would this thing, this thing works generally, this feels more intimate. So would this work on, on a billboard? I don't know, because you might be going by so fast, you might not be able to see all that subtlety. But if it were large enough, it could. But certainly if it was on a flyer or uh, uh, something on your computer screen, you would see it because it would be close enough and it would be in your face and, and intimate in that situation. Okay, anything else? Should I move on? Is this worthwhile going through these things for you guys to see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Interesting. That's, a, that's the term I use when I don't really want to say. Oh, no, I like to crap. see everyone's ideas because I'm, I'm fascinated by how creative everybody is. Well, and this is probably a really good thing to do because um, also it's okay to borrow all these ideas and use them. That's what you're supposed to be doing while you're in class. You're supposed to be looking at other people's stuff and taking stuff that you like that they're doing and making it yours. And they're supposed to be doing the same thing, looking at your stuff and going, yeah, I could use that little thing of color in there. I think I'll put that and enhance my work like that. And that's what you're supposed to do. You borrow and use, and then you throw things away because they don't work. Some of them do work, but you remember how to do them and, and connect with them later on for some other project. Okay, what do you think of this one? I like it. What do you I like? like? You, what, I like you, how the yellow uh, is centered and it contrasts so sharply with the background color. So would you say the yellow is the focal point then? Yes. Yeah, so that's where... Well, I, I, yeah, totally the yellow is, but it also looks like the A and the C as well. Like those three characters, because um, it could be the O too, but it seems like those three with the yellow, um, because they seem to be the brightest and your eye goes right to them. But the rest of the colors are also pretty powerful as well. Um, it's difficult to think about putting blue on blue, but in this case, it works because of the value tone of the blue the the violet is okay stands out because it's hot enough to in contrast with the with the uh um midnight blue background the square in the back um but you couldn't use i mean it would probably wouldn't be as powerful if the whole all of the text was that color violet so the way they choosing the rainbow color and mixing them up a little bit too was a good choice Well, anybody else? What about the uh, the font? Do you guys like the font that was used? Yeah, yeah, I like that the letters seem to overlap each other. I was just gonna ask if you cared if they overlapped or if that was an issue with you because they're not separate. So do you think that the um, that they were individual characters and each one typed on its own separate path and moved together or did he uh, use some of the, the options from the palette, the character palette that we were talking about last week and bring them together? I'd imagine it, he did that. I don't uh, know. They look like individual characters to me that brought, were brought together. I think so too. I feel more like that because when they, but well, no, I think, yeah, because they, they, when you have the character, when you're using the character palette to bring the, the characters together, they don't overlap and obscure each other. They just get closer together so they become a big shape. But also the M isn't lined up with the A. So it looks like it's a separate character that he pulled them all together. You mean it's the rest of them are online. Well, the, I mean, the height might be, uh, you know, it's really, hard to tell. I don't have the option to 
because no, I'm, I'm, I'm on, on Zoom bottom. and I'm not in InDesign. But if I was in design, I'd be able to put the, the guide on the top and measure the tops of all of them. And they might all go to the fit. bottom. If you go to the bottom uh, on the on the right side of the M. Yeah, it's it a little off. It's higher. Right. Which to me says that they're individual letters because all the rest of them line up. Yeah, I think. Well, I, I would agree with you. I think they are, too, which is, you know, just a lot of work um, to do that. It and, but it works. It make it works fine. It looks great. Yeah. And it, the color and it's this this particular logo is really about the color. And that's what makes this work. The M, I suppose, could have been a little bit lighter to make it stand out a little bit more because it's the beginning of the word. Um, and then and then probably it would have been more successful. It's successful already, but it could have been more successful. Anybody else want to say anything? Do you care that the uh, or do you like this kind of font or what if it was a script? Can you imagine what that would have been like? Um, uh, cursive uh, script type um, characters like handwritten. I don't think it would be as good. I think it needs to be blocky like this. That he, the font that he chose, seems to work very well with this. Yeah, especially if he's got a a geometric shape as the background. Um, yeah, then to have the block letters in the front seems to, you know, go with it very well. It it does. It anchors it. It's solid. But then as soon as you said that, I was thinking, what if it was a script thing? That would be, because that was, would be opposites then. And that might be uh, a nice idea too. I mean, it might be, um, because they would be, you know, because of the, ge the geometry and then the hand drawn or handwritten, because of their opposites, they'd be super contrasting. That might work too. And then this is another instance where I'd say, you know what, make them both and let's see. Because you don't know until you see. Hmm. Anybody else got anything that they want to uh, that they want to um, say? Nothing. I'm going on to the next one. I wonder if this will open. It does. I've saved this for you guys. I saw this and I thought this is a good little graphic thing. Um, because I like the idea of the back room. And then of course they put back backwards just as a simple graphic. It was a nice touch and uh, uh, just sharing that with you. And I did, I did do a screenshot of that and said, oh, I got to show that to my students. Just especially since we're talking about doing a campaign poster and we don't want those politicians working in the back room without us. We got to make sure. I don't, sure I don't think we could see what you were showing us. Oh, you guys couldn't see that? Okay, so I have to yeah. share that on my screen. Okay, no, I'll open it later and show you. Let's see, there's a chat here. Does somebody want to say something? Jacob, no, we're not looking at the today. same thing, Jacob. I'll, yeah. I'll show you later. No, you weren't looking at the same thing. Uh, it was a, and I'll show it, I'll share the screen. It's on my desktop, so I have to share my desktop, not the canvas uh, screen. Okay, next one. Missing. Okay, Ooh. now this is what oh, I was talking God. about, about the script. See how, look, they're on a rectangular yeah. background and they have yeah. that kind of fluid, uh, fluid script text and it seems to work okay. Wow. I like that. So it that's why so I was that's why I was saying that um, it would be good to see that one both ways with the color and the and the one with this kind of script. When these and of course these letters can all be changed or, or done individually as well and and moved in, in alignment with each other. So this could have worked, but this is a pretty nice one as well. And I like the one, opacity of the letters, the top letters. Right, so you see which the, is another uh, good a good thing. And I'm glad you brought that up. But does everybody know how to go and adjust the opacity? It's on your, um, your properties palette that you can adjust the opacity whenever you have how you selected or highlighted any of the uh, 
the characters that you wanted so they can overlap each other and you can see through them. That's a great technique and it's just something you need to experiment with. This worked out perfect. And I like that there's 27 agencies because why that number? You think he's, he's uh, Ricardo already 27 years old? Is that what this is? I don't know. But anyway, it makes the shadows from it are really nice and the opacity and the transparency are nice effects as well. Because it gives the, because you, you can only see it on the two and seven on that, those two characters, on the blue characters. So it gives a lot of texture to those two characters and it looks like it's active and, and uh, more engaging. But the fluidness and the flow of the RM is a really nice effect too. Yeah, the shadow too of the R and of the M on the sides, it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, well, and you, like I said, you can only see those on the two and the seven. In the black background, of course, you can't see any of it because you know that there's still a drop shadow on that. If it was a, a lighter color, a yellow background, you would see all that drop shadow in there. But it's nice that you don't, that you only see it on these things. And, and this little area of the O where this comes down here and it closes or it finishes right there at the top of the seven, that's a perfect arrangement. It's a nice arrangement. Was it an accident? I don't know, but it looks really good. I'm sorry, what was that? that I, I didn't follow that. Can you see my cursor on the screen when yeah. I'm moving around? Yeah. Okay, so I'm talking about this shadow from the tip of this, where it comes right up to the top of the seven and flows back around. That's uh, a really nice effect. It has a, and, it, and the fact that it stops right there, it, it has a sense of closure to it. And it, it also anchors it in a way there, which because it's all a drop shadow and flowing, but it makes it stable. And I said, I didn't know if it was an accident that he just moved those there and it happened that way, but it's a good effect. Just, just looking and paying attention. That's all that this is. Anybody want to say anything else? Are you hoping that he does get his 27 agencies? <laughs> he probably has them already. 27 companies. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Everybody ready? This looks like yours, Robin. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah, we all like that. You weren't here last week. We were talking yeah. about these. And we and every well you when you made this too uh, two weeks ago we all got to see it and it was a nice effect to have the color inserted into the character and then the other character with just the stroke around it I remember yeah we adjusted it and we had the, you fixed it you made it better yeah because yeah, we put the green around it or did we do a drop yeah, shadow I don't remember the R so it had um, um, a shadow to it yeah it gave it a little it gave it a a, a definition on the exterior. Yep. But I think there's more. Are there more under here? No, there are in here. No, I did them separately. Yeah, that's okay. I don't mind them separately at all. But this is also good to see because this is a whole different kind of uh, different concept, and it's it's super organized. The other one felt um, like painting and and uh, fluid, and this is a very tight, balanced graphic and of course you learned how to use um, typing on the round path on both of these because you did it on the top and the bottom mm -hmm. right yep and then the m in the center and then the two dots right on the horizon line which the two dots really make it for me to emphasize that horizon line and the top and the bottom or the above and the below is a really nice effect to me thank you and of course it's simple colors too simple green, black, and the background. I don't know what that means. Somebody just texted me and they said, I got the check today. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> it's better than the check is in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was probably, uh, um, it was probably one of my studio mates that I paid their rent or paid rent to them to to cover it. And they're up in in Washington state now. 
So they probably got it. I'll check later and find out that that's what it's referring to. Right, any other comments about this? Nothing. This kind of reminds me of the first one that we looked at with the racing stripes in a way. They have a sensibility, not just because they're green, but because they're, there's the composure, the way it's composed is, is balanced. It's based on, well, maybe not because this one's more symmetrical and the other one is asymmetrical because of the racing stripes, but there's something about them that still connects to me to be similar. Shall I go on to the third one? I don't remember what that one is, but it'll, I'll remember. Uh, the I last one's it. a pain in the butt. Oh, oh, why was this a pain in the butt? Because <laughs> I, I made the crown with lines and then I had to fill in the crown with lines. It, it was truly a pain. Oh, so you didn't, you, you didn't make shapes. Okay, so the, the way to do that without having to do lines and fill it in would have been to use the pen tool. I tried, but I'm not as good as the person who did the staff with the with the um, K on the, was it a K? I think it was a K. Um, an R. An R on the other side. I, I tried, I tried many times. And no, then- but, uh, but when you're using the pen tool, you don't, it's not drawing curved lines. Those are straight points. If you click in one place and then click in another, it's a straight line to the next one. This crown would have been easy to do with um, with the pen tool. Yeah, well, nothing easy about it. But, okay, um, oh, but that's good to know. But I mean, you did a great job doing it the way you did it, but you could have done this um, much ease, much more easily. I'll, I'll demonstrate when, I, when we go back to uh, um, InDesign because I'm not in design right now, but I'll show you how to do that very quickly so that you can make as many crowns as you want. You can be the next Basquiat. Awesome. Next time. Right. Okay. Any comments about this? The shapes are great. I like that they come to a point at the bottom. Was yeah. that difficult too? No, that was easy once I found a font that would do it. Okay. I think well, you, you tried you... it a couple of weeks ago and you were having trouble too, yeah. getting them to pull. Right. But once I found the font that would let me pull on all four corners, Oh, okay. It was easy. So it, it does, it, it, it is about the fonts and some of them that are, uh, the way they're written, they allow you to adjust them differently. Mm -hmm. Now, but I, I'm suspecting though, if this was an illustrator, any font would have worked in illustrator immediately. And you would have been able to adjust any of those wow. anchor points once you turned it into an outline and maybe InDesign does, I don't know, they, do we have an old version of InDesign? I don't know what's going on, but I'm glad you did it the way you did it and it works nicely. Yeah, the fact that the, the letters are pointed makes it look almost like they're cut out of metal, like the crown is. Oh, neat. Yeah, I see oh, that. I didn't me, see it before. Yeah, it has that quality, but and there's also something spooky about it, like, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> something um, sharp coming down on you. Yeah, my husband hated it. So why? <laughs> oh, he just thought it was spooky and weird looking. Because of because like of the all. spookiness. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a spookiness to it, but I like that spookiness. That's what I think is good. It does, it has that, and the crown, of course, has that uh, medieval thing going on. <laughs> you, you know, the King Arthur put him in the torture chamber and, and <laughs> chain him to the walls in the dungeon thing going on. Anybody else want to say anything? No. Okay, we're going on then. Okay, this one was interesting too. Wow. Yeah. And it's a nice drippy little font. Yep. Yeah, that's um, cool. And, and for some reason, this reminded me of a license plate. It has the, because of the shape of it, yep. looks like you could easily put this on your car. <laughs> It could be one of those personalized license plates as a logo. Is that but a font or or how did how did the letters come about? I'm not sure if uh, if she drew them or if it's a font. They're um, very cool. Didn't go to, huh? It's a it's a font. It is a font. It, that's what I thought. Wow. So it is kind of like a melted candle font, melted cake, melted is it frosting. In design, in design font, or was it from Illustrator? Uh, 
I just downloaded it um, from a website. I was using it for another project, and I thought it would be cool for my logo. It works. Yeah. It works nicely. And I like the thin line that you used on the outside of the black line, too, to contain it. That's a nice line or nice effect just to have two, two lines and different thicknesses or different, I guess we call them borders, huh? But to have the different thicknesses makes it a big difference. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Uh, anybody else want to say anything? So is your nickname Mo? Madeline, you're not Mo? Oh, I'm sorry? It's me. Is your nickname Mo? Oh, no, I just put my first initial and last initial. I know, I know. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody else want to say anything? I do. Yeah, what do you want to say, Victor? I, I can't, I can't, I, ha, I have any help with it. Well, I can't do anything right now. It's just, it's just a power outage. Like, take a look. If you want, if you want to take a look. No, not yet, because we're going through all the fonts. You have to wait till I'm done to showing, uh, going through and critiquing the classes or sharing the, cl the classes logos. But we'll do that right after I'm when we're say, done with this, okay? We're halfway. I was trying to say that's just a part of our, I was trying to say this a part of our is going on, so I can't do anything right now. That's why I can't, that's why I can't, I can't connect it. So I can use my phone oh, as so my last you, research. So can you see this on your phone? Yes. Okay, then just keep watching and we'll get to the end of it and, uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to the next one. And we got two of them in here. Oh yeah, these are Jacobs, I like these. Yeah, so this oh, is yeah. the, yeah, we saw these last week, we went through these. This is the preliminary ones, but we also have the script down here that he did too. Uh, which is both of these are really nice ideas. And you know what would make these two great is if they were on color backgrounds, like some of the ones we saw previously. But I do like this digital one too, the one that looks like steps. Mm -hmm. Both of these logos are nice. There's another one down here. These, this is the finished ones. So these ones that we saw up here at the top, this is the beginning of it. They're a little bit smaller but those are the two finished ones, which are nice. Um, the only thing that we need to clean up is those two little things right there. They don't look like they're matching up properly, but this one does. So we certainly can fix that. But both of them, I like the color and, yeah. and I like the one in black and white. The one in black and white is, is more powerful in a way, I think, than just the black ones. And, and it's always simpler to have just one color. And for me, when I always think of black as the universal um, kind of graphic for any kind of font, because everybody recognizes it and everybody uses it and it's identifiable. But there's something also nice about these that this almost becomes a flag to me. I mean, it's a logo, but it also has the red, white, and blue thing. So it's flaggish or the color combination makes it flaggish, flaggish to me, which could be an interesting idea. So Jacob could start his own country. <laughs> I could see you him turning the second one, the black and white one, if he just use a very simple line drawing around it into something like an, an eagle, you know, like that's the eye of it, or a, a fish or something, you know, if you just use a simple black line and that wow. way he could embed his initials into an animal drawing with just a couple of lines. I'm not, I, I mean, I, I think I know what you're saying, but I'm not sure. So you would draw lines? At the, at the top, you know, at, at the top, going off to the right, yeah. you know, so the, the, his so, so uh, for, the letter in the middle becomes the I. From this corner? No, no, if you were above it, above oh. it. Up above here? it, not that far above, a little bit, just a fraction above. You start it over at the left corner. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you kind of moved moved around and made a, a line, like somehow, you know, going like to, to shape 
Yeah, like and that, and that, but if you put like a beak on it, then you could have. Oh, I see. Okay, I see what you're saying. So this could become like a head and a shape right. out here, and then that becomes the eye, like of yeah. an eagle. I get yeah. what you're doing. Okay, I can see that. I remember also when we were looking at these last week, and I was talking about putting um, another color inside of this, like a light yellow color or something as a gradient coming from this side going to that side darker on this side because there's because it's darker here and it's more mass and then fading it over there could be an interesting idea as well um, but that's an entirely different kind of logo then which yeah. again goes with that idea that if you make many you pick the best ones so i gotta go find out anybody else want to say anything about these i'm curious to see what the second one was i mean i already looked at it but i don't remember everything can i go find it can i go click it you guys or do you want to say anything else about uh jp so now that you guys all have initials you could just be those people jp mo pd okay so this is just the group again okay Oh, just I see as an InDesign and a PDF. Got it. Okay. Anything else? Anybody want to say anything? Yeah, I think I think uh, the one with the then the orange on top. I think that one looks good. This one. Oh, the, the top one first first page. This one. Oh, this that with one. black and the and this one you like it with those two together. Yeah. With those colors, you like that color kind of color combination. I think it looks good together. It does. I kind of think I, I kind of agree with you. I think I like that better. What I, I also like the thickness of this and this being a bar down here. And would, would you have made this go all the way to the end or leave it like that? Because now it reads perfectly as a J. But I do like, like that. Like the point. Like yeah, taking, the bar. bringing yeah. this all the way up to the to right here yeah so that so that it becomes continuous like what happens here so in other words it's following this same pattern but i do like the red and the black so you're saying you like the red and the black better than the blue and the red correct yeah i think i'm going with that too well both actually both are pretty good for different reasons um but the black and and red ours do stand out pretty well together good call all right um can i go on yes i think somebody said something you don't say <laughs> anything i'll just sit here all day and see missing students so those are the missing students if you guys are any of those missing students get your stuff in okay neither of these are going to show up so oh because i have to open them in indesign huh and this won't let me to open in design while i'm in this in this sh screen sharing thing maybe i can here we go let's see what yeah, happens. But i don't know that we'll see it oh you guys can't see this can you because yeah, we'll yeah. be we're in canvas with you yeah all right so um yeah i'll have to go and get that out of the way yep yeah, you guys can't see that. Okay, but it was, that was Victor's that we saw that last week that he actually did while we were working, while we were doing um, class. And we'll go over it later. Yeah, you can't go, I can't go switch programs when I'm stuck in sharing. Um, so this is JR, this is uh, Jeannie's JR. And this actually, the fun. black and the red is the same sort of thing we were just talking about. Those are fun. Those work really well. And I like the repetition of it too. Um, it's almost like growling. You know, <laughs> grrr, GR. <laughs> and, and you also, because you repeat the R's and the J down here, it does sort of the same thing there. So, so you guys can see this. So if I open a, if I open a PDF, will you, have, or will you be able to see that? Because you can see when I go to the next one, right? Oh, yeah, because you're still in Canvas. Yeah, but I can't open an InDesign thing. This is kind of nice. I don't know if you guys can see how subtle this is because she also inserted a gradient in here, but has the uh, magenta stroke around it. It's very small, one point, I think. 
maybe one, maybe two point or one and a half point magenta stroke, which works pretty well for that because of the, um, the script quality of the font. And then obviously you got to play with drop shadows too. And all of the, uh, the gradient and the circular gradient. So let's go see what color is, color PDF. Oh yeah, I remember going through this. Were you, did we, you were here last week, right? When we went through this. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. I was here. Yeah, because I remember going through this when we were talking about the white line and the shapes. And I made- And we created a, a new one without the black letters, a transparent one. Right, because we just put the stroke on it, right? So you could see the, um, you so you could see the object or the, the painting behind it. Yes. Which is the letters. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good one. Is this too big? I mean, it's filling my screen. Can you guys see that? Okay. It's cut off there. You should be able to see the full thing. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a, a better solution. And we kind of, I mean, I did like the, uh, the white bar coming through right to the center here. Which again, I don't, I don't know when I think I did I say that last week that it could have gone all the way through from this tip to that tip. I think on the next one, I fix that. I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Because it to, was this one and then the next one where I adjusted it. I have to enlarge my screen again so I can find your assignments because they got so tiny they were hard to click on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yes, this is what, exactly what we were talking about and turned it into a blue so you can see through them. And, and it's difficult to read as a logo, but it's it reads, um, I mean, as a logo driving by quickly, but it would read as a logo um, in a smaller environment, like on your computer screen, or if it was some kind of a, a personal flyer or something like that, rather than a large billboard on the side of a building. Although I could be wrong until we try it. So <laughs> would you go find a building and make, you could print these things large and in vinyl and hang them <laughs> up. Shrink wrap a building. They're gonna be doing that. They're already doing that. There'll be LEDs all over them. So any, any comments about this, you guys? I like it. It came out pretty good, huh? Yeah, yeah. This, this is what we were talking about. We did, did correct it last week when we were doing, when we went through your first two and then changed it to this and it came out much nicer. In fact, but the other one, there's a good quality about it too, but this seems to be better with the blue because it connects with the water, the blue font. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm calling that water. I don't know that that's water. Oh yeah, and then we did think outside the box. I like that too. Yeah, that came out good. Can you see the bottom of this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I gotta move you people because I can't see it. Okay. There we go. And, and what I did like about this, this is not a logo, but this is more like a poster because it's got so much content and text to it. Um, in fact, this could be uh, the beginnings of your, um, your poster for your campaign because you're campa campaigning for lions. Lion freedom. <laughs> free the, free mm -hmm. the mountain lions. They're already free. They're running around on the freeways, aren't they? We don't want them to get hit, though. Um, what I did like about this is just using the one word that has a different color and everything else is in black. So it emphasizes what you want people to do, which is part of one of the projects that we're going to be doing in the future, too, is how uh, text and color is going to emphasize um, the direction that you want people to perceive your work or whatever you're doing as. And this does that because of the word think being um, a, a different color and a different kind of font. Well, I guess it is not really a different kind of font because that's the same font as outside. But um, because of the different color and scale of it and the capital letters, it does make, it stands out and, it, and it's effective. And the word box also is effective because of solid different kind of font and it's a solid black. So those two things, they reinforce what the message is. And that's, that's something to pay attention to because you want to be able to use font to be able to do that. And that the variations of font and, um, and color as well, but uh, scale, uh, I think, is going to be effective. 
Anything else? Anybody want to say anything else? You can all speak. I don't. I never mute anybody. I don't believe in shutting people up. I'll have an argument with anybody. But you guys mute yourselves, huh? You don't have to. Well, I need some help, but I can't do anything since since my computer is since the, since my router is 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 it's off since the power outage, so I can't yeah. do anything right now. Okay, yeah, that's all right. Because we're can, as long as you can see what I'm doing on the screen on your phone, then you're okay. Because we're not doing anything, we're not doing any work right now. I, well, you could be if you were um, sharing or splitting your screen and do InDesign and listen to me at the same time, which would be uh, productive. Okay, so I'm moving on to the next uh, set. Anybody else want to say anything about Jeannie's stuff? Nothing. Crickets. And this is missing, so we don't know what they're up to. Let's see what this surprise is. I wrote a lot about this. Uh-oh, come on. You can do it. With my computer working, not looking. Oh, is... wow, that's cool. Okay, yeah, this is a this is a nice simple font. And it kind of reminds me of the one with the um the uh music one with the S and the uh, R uh -huh. because it has that same kind of quality about it, but his initials are O R. But it reminds me also of Oreo for some reason. Oreo cookie. <laughs> because of the white and black. I had one of my students in my ceramic class make a huge Oreo cookie the other day. I don't know how it's going to come out, but I hope it comes out all right. Um, so what do you like about this? Because you oohed and awed it for when you popped up. Um, so if you can put in words what you like about it, that would be helpful. It almost looks like a ball of string that's unraveling. Like when you first see it, it kind of the effect is movement, like the string is unraveling from the yarn or something. Right. And then you realize, oh, these are letters. I totally, okay, I see that. Yeah, I see exactly what you're talking about. It looks like it's bouncing and, and this is uh, a thread coming out over here. Yeah, it's totally movement. I really like the outer super thick line that doesn't connect to the, to to the this, left side to of this the little line right here. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. connect. I like that. And I like the the um, inner circle that's not as thick as the outer piece. And then I like the font. I don't know if that's a font or if it was hand done. I, I just, I, I like how Orlando, it are you here? comes together. Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Well, is that a font or did you fabricate those? Uh, fabricate. I use the pen tool for all of it. Wow. That's good. It looks fabricated. I thought so too, but that's great. Um, yeah, I agree with what you said about the, um, the three different sizes of the thicknesses yeah. of the shapes, the, the thick, the thin, or, and then the thinnest. Yep. And, and it makes sense for the thinnest one to be the R because of the, the fluidness of it as well. It, um, Orlando, anything you want to say about it? What you were thinking while you were doing it? Uh, or, for, for this logo, I didn't particularly thought of anything, to be honest. I just went with how both uh, my initials would go with each other. And then this was the result of it. They work nicely together. Um, when I when um, it has all of those effects that everybody talked about, but when I first view it, I always think of it as a camera lens looking at me on the left, and then mm -hmm. and then uh, um, it's an afterthought when I look at the R because oh R, it's an R O R. The fact uh, that there's a, a break in space between the line of the R and the O, you know, at the top and the bottom, there's that white space there. It almost yeah. looks like a burst of light, like a sparkle. It has that kind of quality about it. And what also is really good about that the fact that he left those spaces there um, is it, it separates or does not complete itself 
so that the R can have its own effect as well. Hmm. So the R becomes an individual character and has its own strength and the O becomes its individual character and has its own strength, but they all come together at the same time. It's really, it's really- And if those spaces weren't there, it wouldn't come together as well. I mean, it probably would have worked okay. Uh, would have looked like the R was hiding behind the O, but now it doesn't look like the R is hiding behind the O. It looks like they're they're separate characters and merging together, but still separate. Um, yeah, good job, good job, Orlando. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? How many of these did you do, Orlando? You should do thirty. <laughs> uh, I did. I think three others, but this one was the one of my favorites. I'd have to agree that this is well. I I don't know what your other ones were. They weren't as good, huh? But this is that's always a good thing for these for the rest of our students to see your mistakes and how to correct them. So it's okay to share your mistakes. But I'm glad you did this one and put it up there. I'm just telling you, it's okay to. To, to do put in more than one because we will always pick the best one and then also say what's wrong with the other ones and how to make them better which only makes gives you more instruction of how to solve problems so that in the future you can always make stuff better okay in, oh thank you anybody else want to say anything yeah it's a great uh logo i think it does look like a camera lens Say it again. I said I think it's a great logo. It um, is. It does give it like a camera lens look. So you see the same thing I do as a camera lens, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that reads pretty clearly. But it, it might not have been intentional. It's just because it's really just meant to be no, but it has a different kind of effect. So in a way, uh, I mean, if, if the company that you were designing for was... Uh, a filming company that would make perfect sense too. It would be usable for that, but you should also think that you know um, for your own everybody else when you're looking at this, how you could use that just without the R part, you could use that those elements and create a camera lens and incorporate that into a logo if someone hired you to do that. This would be a, a method that you could use to produce a design if someone was asking you to do that you could put a photo inside the center circle like well, you're looking it, through a camera lens but sometimes that you don't want to do that you want to keep it so simple that it just reads as as the uh, idea of a camera lens rather than than make it too graphic and make it too yeah. clear it's good to to leave it um suggestive rather than uh concrete but on the other hand, I always like to see those ideas anyway and see if they work because it could work. And it could work quite nicely. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go on, all right? We only got about five more to go, I think. And this one doesn't even have one. And this I'm always, oh yeah, we saw these last week and I was talking about how much I like the T yeah. upside down. And the rotating letters. I thought that was really good. I mean, it's very simple. Um, the script is really nice and it has a, a good, uh, strong, fluid quality about it. Oh, and, and they were talking about the paint splotch here, which is can you guys all see that or do I zoom in? Yep. Yeah, we can see. Does that make it better? Because this is paint up here and they were explaining this last week and how it flows over the T and then drips down and puddles down here within the frame, which is a nice effect. And I, and I like that. Um, the only thing I would have done differently is make this paint into a big splash so that it was really clear that somebody threw or shot uh, uh, through the squirt gun, you know, they were throwing paint against the wall and it's splattering. And that would have been a little bit more clear but I do like that it's dripping like this. And the, of course the shadow here is a big a key element too, that it's dripping back there behind that. So it gives it that sense of being three-dimensional, which reinforces the idea of having a drop shadow, which is the illusion of three dimensions. 
well, this is all illusional because it's all two dimensional, but it's a nice effect. In fact, I'd like to see more of that. That would be great. Um, yeah, the rest of these, uh, I mean, this is nice even squeezed in the box. And the idea also of these two colors are working well together. In this one where you just have the simple, the green and the black, that all functions very well. And this one as well, and the, and the different color here um, splashing down. It reminds me in a way of, uh, of uh, what's that guy? Mr. Brainwash, the guy from uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop movie. It has, because he's into big splash painting. He uses a lot of splatter painting, copying um, or referencing Jackson Pollock and, and all of the abstract expressionists combined with Warhol and, and, uh, and uh, graffiti and street art all at the same time. And pop art, I suppose. And this, and I do like this one where we're rotating the letters around uh, vertical, horizontal, and then upside down. And it's really hard for me to tell what this little thing is, but I know it's a character here. And we talked about it last week and I can't remember what we said, but it's a nice little thing. And it reminds me of uh, a painting by Ed Ruscha where he, he painted the word radio and then he painted C-clamps. You know what C-clamps are where you tighten down wood when you're gluing wood together. And he, and he pinched the word radio and it was called torturing the word radio. <laughs> But it was a, it's a really great painting. Um, and, and it was done, uh, I don't know, back in the 1960s, I think, or well, yeah, probably in the 1960s. So it's really old and the concept is still holds true today. Looks good. This is a good uh, logo. Anybody want to say anything about these, this group? Nothing. I think I think last week we commented about the exclamation point. Oh yeah, like we did. We talked gateway. about this. What did we say about it though? Well, it looks like a gateway, you know, like the other letters are penned up trying to get out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. It looks like they're they're being uh, held in. And and this little loop here thing, um, make well, I don't know why it reminds me of a link or a lock or something too. Mm -hmm. Um. What's different though about it compared to these with the solid background, I kind of like this, this simple um, double lines of, of uh, well, di well, different kind of line work that they applied there. Cause you have those options when you're putting in lines where you can do um, for the frames and the strokes, you can put in multiple lines or you can put in dotted lines. So you also need to experiment with that. And clearly they did experiment with that in this. And it's subtle, but it looks good. It works nicely. Okay, so I, I just clicked and moved on. Oh yeah, I kind of remember this one too. Oh yeah, look at that. What Ooh, do you think on Art wow. 635? So this one kind of has that same, like when we first started with the, uh, the racing stripes, has that same thing, except it has uh, a lot more action to it. This is really mm -hmm. active and, and action-packed, um, it, re, it has a, to me at least, uh, because, because of these marks up here, it has a, a sort of um, Asian sensibility to it, to me, in a way like chopsticks or hash marks. Um, but uh, also the way it's cut. I mean, like these shapes, and, and I'm guessing is, are you here, Zoo? Wang, are you here? Yes. Good. So did you put it, did you put a white circle right here to do this? Uh, no, I use some eraser to move the part of blue. Oh, so oh, you wow. moved it, you use the anchor points to move it? Yes. Okay. But that works really nice. But you did have, did you use, do the same thing here or did you put white circles behind these? Yeah, the same thing. Okay, you did that really nice. But you could have done that, that created that same effect by putting white circles here. And I don't know if that would have saved you time, but it would have created that same effect where you were able to put this shape right through the center of it. Okay. 
I, I'm okay. just I'm just looking at how I would have done this. I mean, because it would have been speedy to do that for me. It would go, oh yeah, okay, let's just do that on top of it. But that would be a really nice effect. And you did a nice job by pushing this back, these two shapes back, so that this red uh, little, um, I, what do we call that? A, a trapezoid almost coming to a point coming through there. So you made space for it to come through. That was a nice choice to do that. And I like that it's narrower here where it's thicker. And then this gets wider up here where it gets narrower on the red because that creates movement. It pushes your eye through those two little lines and up to this point and you loop back around. Compositionally, this works really nice, this whole thing. And even the W as it comes to this point here, instead of leading your eye off to the page because it gets so fine, your eye comes back up to here. Because normally, I mean, and also because you left a lot of space over here. If you would have gotten this close to the edge, it would have led your eye off the page. But because most of the action is over here, it brings your eye back around, which is a compositional thing that you need to pay attention to. And you handled it very well here. You did a great job. Thank you, Professor. Thank You're you. welcome. Anybody I mean, else would think anything? And the colors yeah. also are good. I mean, it's really clear that it's blue. And it's a dark blue, but it's not black. Because black, I don't think, would have been as powerful here with the red. So these colors work really well together, I think. Good choice of color. So anybody else? You were going to say something, Jean? Yeah, it's so good. It, it reminds me of electricity, you know, when you see it. Right. It's electricity really active. Waves. It's active and, and sparky. And you see the XW through in so many different places. You know, yeah. it's just repeated, repeated, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's just so good. Yeah, the initials work great that way. Yeah, it, I, I think it worked out pretty good. I mean, you did a great job putting this together. Anybody else uh, want to say anything? This would be a good company, except that don't call your company Art 635. <laughs> because nobody's going to go to that place, but they'll go to the they'll go to the the, the Wang the Zhu Wang. Yes. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice graphics though. Good design. Did you do other ones besides this one, or just only one? Uh, I made another one, but I think it's uh, not very good, so I just uh, upload one of these. Okay. Yeah. It's it, and like I said previously, it's okay to share the ones that are bad. Just say first try, no good, and then the one, the finished, and that's fine. Only because it's good for other people to see it. Okay. Your failures are educational, and that's what this is education. Okay. Anybody want to say anything else about this? Would you change the colors to pink and green? Just saying. I like, I like the, the two-tone. I mean, the colors go well together, too. You like the what? Two-tone colors. Oh, yeah. No, good choice, right? Um, I'm with that. I agree. Okay, I'm going on. There's only two more people, I think. one more after this oh yeah look at this these came out really nice i like this group Ooh, i like that see, i know you guys uh, you're in my way i have to move you out of the way because i can't <laughs> see on my screen you just put you I like the there. martini glass it yeah. does read as a martini glass i said i thought the same thing and if they would have put a little dot in there that would have been probably <laughs> not such a good idea because it would have read like a bar. But if you did have a bar and, and you were looking for something like that, it would be a very sophisticated type of martini glass. Yeah. And I would probably stop by that bar and just look at the graphics. I like the bottom right one, the circle. Why? It just feels good. It has, it does have a whole different feel about it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it just much feels more, good. It's, I like it. It's it's um it's comfortable. Yep. Um, but it, it's weird. That, uh, well, it's it. We should recognize why it's comfortable, and it's comfortable because of the curved lines. 
so the curved lines are because we are people we're people we're not organic we're organic we're not geometric that is a, a, a connection right there so that's why it feels comfortable where the other ones that are more um uh, uh geometric are much more um, mechanical and a little bit alienated but also super interesting to me because yep. I like I like building stuff, so uh, I'm into mechanics and architecture and so forth. I really like the Z. This one uh, works the best for me right here because of the because of the mass. Because it has it's very at one point it's very thin and light, and at the other point it's really heavy, and and powerful and solid, which I think is a really nice effect. And then of course these are this is really. Uh, a pretty effect and then the martini glass is really nice too the z the wz in there i think they're actually and this 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 group right here reminds me of um um uh, who is it louis vuitton it looks yeah. like the kind of graphics you would see on louis vuitton so this would be perfect if you were starting your own clothing company you could probably do that or even eat saint laurent type thing combined this would be that would be something that people would recognize right away that oh we're looking at uh, uh, a fashion we're looking at clothing mm -hmm. and it would connect like that only because all those other companies have used that same kind of style of font so that it almost falls into play but it's because they're on top of each other like that the whole structure of it becomes different Anyway, nice job. I think. Anybody else want to say anything? I, I do like this one up here that with the way they built this too, the ZW. And the drop shadows and stuff. And they're not overused, you know, they're not, it doesn't feel like it's tricky. It feels like it's sophisticated, which is a big it, that makes a difference when it feels when you're looking at drop shadows or using drop shadows sometimes they look like they're just thrown in there as a trick but when they're put in or assembled like this then it looks like it's sophisticated and it becomes much more um i don't know uh a much more of a solid um trustworthy shapes and, and this part right here i like a lot where you have these three or this group of of dark and and uh or black and green coming together without the white in the center. So it becomes a solid mass. It really changes it with the when there's no white in there. If they would have left the white in there, wouldn't have been as powerful. Anybody else want to say anything? Nothing. OK, let's see if this last one could be our test student. Let's see what it says. Nope, it's Christine. Because sometimes at the end of Canvas, they put in a test student so that I can go and write notes into the test student. Okay, so uh, Christine's in, so CZ, which is um, just- I like it. Huh? I like it, I like, I like it. Go, but, but say why? <laughs> I don't always know why, I just know what I like. Um, so I like it, how there's like a little circle that's created with a C connecting to the Z and I don't know, it's just nice. This part, this part is really nice where these do connect, where this tip connects, mm -hmm. but for me, I would have adjusted this tip so that it's, it ends right at the tip of the C uh, yeah. without yeah. hanging over. I think this okay. is, this is graphically it looks like it's uh, hanging in midair and I would have taken the top of the Z and made it this part thicker so that it it connects to the top of the C as well because yeah, we've nice. got we have a different color um, um, magenta on on the stroke compared to the darker red out here which would emphasize their differences and it would separate them enough still because I think that was maybe the concern is they wanted to make sure they were separate. But this part where it flows down right into that, that's the nicest part right there, where the C 
comes right into the Z. Those two nice. shapes come together. It's a nice font. It's nice color. The it's color nice. is comfortable. Mm -hmm. I like the, the pusey violet color in the fill. It's a good choice. Yep, it's nice. It is nice. And the only things I would change are the things I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you made the changes that you're suggesting, yeah. it would look like a puzzle that fits. Or is this way it looks like a puzzle that the puzzle piece doesn't quite go in? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, is that a good thing or a bad it, thing? Is that a better thing that it doesn't fit and that it stands yeah, out? No, I, I think what you're saying would make it more, you know, because when I look at it, I, I agree. I like the color very much. And then I go, what's not fitting? And then when you said that, I thought, yeah, that's it. It, it would make it look like they're all part of the same puzzle then. It, it would connect them. It would, it would, they would be fluid. The yeah. shapes would be fluid. And, and, but what you said is also kind of important is maybe we don't want them to fit, but then, then if you don't want them to fit, then you have to emphasize the not fit more, which if means you either pull them knee. apart or, or uh, drop, drop this part so that this part didn't even fit. But right yeah. now, this this shape right in here that looks like a uh, a, a C a C triangle, I mean, or a circle triangle, oval triangle, that becomes something different. Like that whole circle, this you could have put a color behind that shape and had these on the outside, a light color, nothing, not something so powerful or black or anything like that. Although black might work because that emphasizes both the Z and the C. Um, to be so something either subtle or something super powerful would work in there and that would make that even stronger but again this is one of those things where i would go oh, okay so i'd save this one go and make those changes save it again under a different name and then make more changes and do that and then have the whole row of them to look at to see what's best and what what changes worked and what changes didn't work and and just be able to look at them and say hey this is good for this idea but this is better for this idea because you want things to be flexible and fluid while you're working on them and you want to be able to like i said use them for perhaps other projects they don't always need to be this project but they're so you use them as a marker for oh yeah use this design for a whole different group of letters or different uh, context, but you have the style down so that you know how to make those changes if you want to. That's why, again, that's why I save so much crap. But unfortunately, I don't go look at it. But you should. There you go. That's me educating. You should. You should do it. I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that should end our class. Okay, so anybody who did not submit their logos, do it so that we can, uh, I can grade them. And, and now I'm so, going to stop sharing. So what do you want me to do, Victor? Stop. Um, so when does this assignment due this Saturday? Well, okay. This is our last day before spring break. So um, we're not officially, we're not supposed to have a meeting next uh, Thursday night because we're on spring break. But if you wanted to, we could, I don't care if I'm home, it's no big deal to me. But uh, so we, because this I was is about the same assignment about Saturday, when it's to do it will. Uh, what did I put? I don't know what I put on there, but I'm not I'm not going to make it do. I'll change it until the what the 11th here. Let me go look at the calendar. I think it's I think it's called. Let, uh, let's see what we got here. OK, it's so called, the, uh, campaign, the campaign this, poster. Yeah, this is the campaign poster. So the seventh would have been our normal meeting. So I would make it due on the 14th then. Because I can't make it due. I can't make you guys do or tell you that it's due if we're supposed to be on spring break. So I have that's why to I say on, it, on my calendar. I have to make it due the next week. OK, will that work OK for you? Yes. Because that's why okay, I said so, in my calendar. So um, do you want me to? Um, because I did download a bunch of pictures for campaign posters and they're on my, I mean, I just went to Google and I Googled campaign posters and most of the ones that came up 
were, well, obviously the first one that came up was Obama, right? The Obama poster because of Shepard Ferry. And it's so popular around the world, or at least around the United States, or maybe it's just in California. I don't know. Because who knows? I don't, I don't talk to people in the Midwest um, who tell me whether or not they like the Obama poster or not. Are any guys from the Midwest? So I got, I got another question. You can tell me. Have, yeah, go ahead, Victor. What's your question? So I'm working on my cat paper. I haven't tried. I haven't tried. But like placing the image because that sent you the email. Like, do you have my email? Yeah, I have your email. Um, you, you can. I, but I. You mean you emailed me already today? I think like on Tuesday. Oh, but you were having a problem. Well, did you make a uh, a picture box? Because you shouldn't have a problem putting something in InDesign. Here, I'll go. I'll go do it. I'll go. I'll go share my screen and go open InDesign right now. Do I have open InDesign so, open already? Wait, don't you have a video of it on on record? Because I'm trying to. It find will be video. now if I do it right now. You'll have a video, but I do believe that there's a video on the first one. Um. Uh, one of our oh. first ones that we did. Hey, look at that. Yours popped right up. Okay, so this is InDesign. So let's see. Now, what did I do with you guys? So where did I watch the video? You, you should be able, oh, I guess because I post them in, in modules that have already closed, you don't have access to them anymore, do you? That's what you're saying, right? That you don't have access to, um, how come this won't move? There we go. Okay. If you can extend the date on them. I can, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he's asking me to do. So uh, this is my thing where I don't want that. <laughs> I lost you guys. <laughs> there you are. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Okay, so I lost, <laughs> I lost my Zoom pictures. I couldn't see you because I had my InDesign, my... Uh, um, internet open plus a bunch of other things which we do want to see okay so you i will extend those but i'm going to go do that right now if you would like me to do that victor to show you how to go and put a a document in uh, um or a picture into a box or get it on your page because you don't really even need a box to we, put we a, don't a document see your screen in. though huh we don't see your screen. Oh, I haven't shared it yet. I'm no. just, I'm still asking questions of you. Oh. You want me to share it now? Okay, we'll go to, uh, to InDesign. Is this it? That's the, that's Canvas. This is InDesign. Okay, so I'll just do this right here. So now we're in InDesign. And can I move that? Yep. Okay, so we got this new document right here, right? Victor, you see that? Can you see that now? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go up to file. And I'm going to go say uh, place. I'm going to choose come down to the word place. And I haven't even picked anything, but it's going to ask me to go pick something. So let's see, I'm going to go find something on my desktop. What have the, I put the problem there? Is that trying to find a, 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 an Im image from Google search. I'm what? trying to place that here. Oh Google no, you search. have you have to if you find the image in Google search, you have to go save it somewhere first. You have to go and you have to put it on your um you have to put it in a folder so that it saves so that you can go place it there. See, I don't even know what these are. Where did I get that? I don't know where that screenshot came from, but I'm gonna put it in there. So anyway, so I'm, I'm, this is on my desktop. Where did I get that picture? I don't remember downloading that at all of cars. Okay, so now I'm opening, I went to place and all you have to do it and click on the picture from your folder that you saved it into or your desktop like I just did. And then you click and drag and it's gonna make a window that it's proportionate to the objects that you're putting in there. And this is Marco's Lodo's $50 car. Is it $50 to $100? I have no idea what this is about, but it looks like artwork from somewhere. You know, just can I say, if, if you're using the student program, 
you can't import a picture directly from your desktop you have to first put it in your home folder. Oh, okay. So then, then, so then it doesn't work this way. So you have to put it in. So you have to go like this and file, or you have to make a picture box and then say open. No, well, no, you can work dragging things in, but it just has to be from the home folder. Oh, so okay. you have so, to first put it in home and then okay. it. So it can't be in your desktop folder and it can't be in your InDesign folder, but it has to be in the home folder in InDesign. Yes. Okay, do Victor, do you understand that? Like I try and get a Google, I try and get it from Google Images and paste it in the, like the home folder you said? Yes, you have to put it in the home folder and then you will have access to it. That, that's a problem I'm having, like I can't remember how or... The little book at the top, you click on the little book. Is that right, Jean? See, I don't have the... I don't have on... InDesign open, but it looks like it, there's two bars and I remember one bar at the top is whitish. And the other one is the toolbar below it. It's kind of blackish. The whitish one on the top is where you'll access the the home folder. Right. Do we do it like next 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 class? Because mine's my computer. Like again, I have a power outage and I can't connect my computer to the internet yet. Yeah, we can do it next class. Okay. Or but, is there a video? I will. Is unless, there a recording of it? Yeah, there, this is being recorded. But would you like? Because I don't have the the uh um, i don't have the video of that I don't, uh, okay hold on victor i don't have access to the same program options that you guys have or that you're required to have from the way you've downloaded it so would one of you guys want to share your screen and show him where the where the bar at the top where you open that folder and put stuff in or save work or documents into it and then apply it to the screen. I can't do it because I can't get into InDesign right now. It's just okay. not cooperating. Anybody else? Oh, I, I opted for the real InDesign. So, so you're, you have the same one I have and you do the same things. Yeah. The method that I would use. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, cause I don't have that. I don't have the way that set up, so I can't show you exactly how to do well, it but. well it, it looks the same though like what you put on your screen looks like what we have the only thing is if we just try to drag it from the desktop it just won't do it it won't do so, it so you have to put it in the folder first yeah the home folder okay so you remember, Robert, seen... how, how it worked with, like but but you know what gene yeah we don't have that whitish um bar, bar at, at the top. top no we so don't have that we That's don't have that, that. Okay. Yeah, we don't. So we don't have that little group of folders and those uh, options up there that you guys have using huh. using the. Uh, um, I can try and get AWS. It. I can't. It's gonna. Be. But Victor, the point is, save it or or somehow drag it into your home folder, and then you will be able to have access to it, so that you. That's why I did it, last time. Did it work? That's why I did on Tuesday. And did like, it work? It to the, wait, which home folder? Because that's what I did and it doesn't like work. The home folder that's in InDesign at the top of the bar. At the, that's the why exactly where I did and it doesn't work. Oh, huh. that should have worked. By drag and drop, because that's what I exactly did. Well, you, you, okay, if you got it in there and it's saved and if you opened it and saw it, then you still have to go up to uh, the option, the file, place and then choose place and then choose um, the, the your home folder should open or some folder should open and you would choose home and then that would folder would open and you'd be able to choose the name of the photograph that you want to place and click it and then click on and drag it into InDesign and it should work. That's my expectation. And I saw you guys do that when I couldn't uh, access InDesign a couple of weeks ago and you were showing me all of your screens and working. And I do remember how you did that. And it seemed like it went like it worked like that. Um, anyway, we'll find out, Victor, to make it work. So I you, my notes too, because I may have written down it when we first started doing it. I'm and I, I'll go back to the uh, other modules and I'll open them all up and extend them so that you can go in and look at the uh, recorded videos. I do think that I put um, three 
uh, video recordings on on our last week's or the week before uh, module, and I just stacked them all up in there. But I, I can just extend the time so you can have access to them, and you can open them whatever you need to. So do you want me to go now to um, just go through some of the campaign poster uh, options or some of the examples that I looked at when I was at Google? Yes. I mean, you could do the same thing, obviously, but but we can go look at them together, I guess. It's not a problem. I mean, everybody can go to their own Google and, and just search campaign posters. And the first one that I saw popped up was uh, Bobby Kennedy. So in order to get out of this, I have to stop sharing and then share again, huh? In order to move into the internet. Because let's see if that works. Because, yeah, here's our Google politics. Can you see that? Does that yeah. show up on, on your yeah. screen? All of the Obama things? Yes, here's the Does it say, president. Mine Kennedy. says C. Oh. This is the uh, just a lot of, I mean, uh, Nelson Brown. I have no idea who Nelson Brown is. But uh -huh. I mean, some things that were, this was kind of an interesting idea for a political poster, see it like it is, which has no name attached to it. But then you have another option like this one, which is um, uh, the vote for George Davison. This is one of those, those things you stick in someone's lawn. which I thought was kind of interesting because the yard yard signs like that, they're selling them here, but you could put anything on them you wanted. But most of the ones that, that seem to pop up immediately are a lot of Shepard Ferry posters because he does a lot of political stuff and the graphics are pretty good for him. But this is the Obama one is, was the most obvious, the hope one for, for what was that, 2006 or something like that? I can't even remember. It was so long ago, but he's he got sued over that one too. He lost a lot of money there in his graphic really? design business. Why? Why was he sued? Oh, because he stole the photo from somebody, uh, a photographer, uh, and didn't get permission, uh, and he published it and sold an uh, awful lot of posters and made a lot of money. And so he got sued by the photographer, and he had to share. He had to uh, share his wealth. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. is okay, but all he had to do was, you know, buy, pay the photographer probably two hundred dollars or something, because that's what they would sell their photo for, and and then he would have had no problem. See, some of these other ones are quite nice. He does a lot of graphics like this that have the idea of the. Uh, I always think of them as sun rays, but um, there was a big issue in Los Angeles about him using these graphics in uh, Koreatown. And they uh, considered it to be like uh, um, the Japanese rising sun, which uh, they were completely opposed to from World War II because of the abuses of the invasions at that period of time of China and, and um, Korea. But he, I, and I see, I mean, I'm looking at it and I do remember, I know what the posters are, the, the Japanese rising sun emblem was that was used during World War II looks very much like this, but he uses them more like it's a sunrise and sunset and the sun um, shining rather than being something evil, which is a nice uh, uh, graphic element too. I mean, I do, I do appreciate it and I like it. And then he does good graphics like this, enough noise and lies for politics. Give me some truth. And I think I have uh, in my in my collection in my house somewhere, I have a Shepherd Fairy poster from when uh, uh, Bernie Sanders was running. And I went down to the um, uh, uh, a rally at the American Hotel in the American Theater there. And he had um, he was on stage giving lectures, but he was uh, Shepherd Fairy was selling sign posters for Bernie Sanders. So I might have one rolled up in my garage somewhere. Um, anyway, this, but uh, there's others, there's like this one, which is for the US Army that they made for recruiting and stuff. Uncle Sam wants you, I want you for the US Army. That, that, that always looked threatening and scary to me. 
I didn't want to go to the army. I would feel really bad if I was a Russian right now and Putin was trying to re recruit me to go fight in Ukraine. That wouldn't be very good. And I'm sure the Russians wouldn't like it either. I mean, the Russian uh, uh, young people who are being conscripted to go fight a war that they probably don't really believe in. Um, older ones, this is a weird one. This I thought was really weird, Bill. <laughs> just, just a big face, vote for me. <laughs> and it looks like an old uh, um, painting of, um, who's that guy who did the Saturday evening post things? Uh, um, it was very popular. Uh, yeah, um, is that the guy that he's an illustrator? He did the yeah, Norman, Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell, yeah. It doesn't that kind of feel like a Norman Rockwell painting? A little bit, but it's weird looking. It's I don't even know who Bill is, <laughs> but you could make a campaign poster about that if you wanted to. This was the one that um, that I first saw was the Kennedy one. A time for greatness, which at that time, and I'm thinking, you know, that's just really simple graphics. So we got a photograph of, of a black and white photograph, almost like a Xerox photograph, but a little uh, more powerful now with more value tone and then red, white and blue and then white text on both of those. And that worked pretty good as a campaign poster, as a graphic with the instead of a flag type thing, but it still has a flag issue or feel about it because it's red divided by a white line and then blue below, which I always look at as, I mean, when, um, like when I look at the Ukraine flag now, I look at the blue on the top has gotta be the sky and the yellow on the bottom has gotta be the, uh, the corn and wheat that they grow. So it's the earth below and the sky above. This is like the red to me is the sunset or something and then water below. It's so almost it's not, exactly on the ocean that's almost exactly what i what i did almost exactly there you go and see that this is so standard and simple too yeah did you did you uh put yourself in there to run for office then no i put uh what's his name you got that crown you could be queen you know. <laughs> what's his name um trump <laughs> no he's running for mayor caruso oh yeah caruso uh, that's a good name too. Uh, just a nice Caruso name. Robinson Caruso. Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole bunch of people running for mayor, aren't there? Yeah, there's a boatload. Yep. And aren't we supposed to be voting soon? Are they, when is that in May? June. June. Oh yeah. So two months. So there will be a bunch of these political flyers coming through our mailbox pretty soon. I mean, I and I used to collect these things and work and use them to paint on for art and paint over them for the little flyers that were coming through. But in my in my mail at my studio, but I don't do that so much anymore because we don't get so much mail anymore, which is great. Trees like that, mm -hmm. they don't get to die. OK, so back to any more of these. So anyway, um, simple campaign posters, but, you know, it doesn't have to be uh like a real politician it could be it could be you you could be running you could make yourself a, a campaign poster and run for your local neighborhood whatever watch group i don't know um you could run for uh head of the soccer team anything um some of these are just text like this fought for freedom see you get it and a lot of them are just simple text. This is weird, the wooden the crosses, not wooden crosses, I vote for labor, which is, could be a, a this one is a graphic, but this, they look a lot older or aged. This one is, is historic to me with the using the flags again. The, this, in this case, the flag with the Kennedy thing or the colors with the Kennedy thing, are much more sophisticated than what's taking place here. And this looks like it's an old campaign poster where they weren't really that good at graphics yet. Let's see what this one is. Oh yeah, look at those boys, the presidential image. So there's our group. And this is kind of nice because you got two Republicans and two Democrats and they put them in red and blue. 
so for red and blue states, you know, so for the politics thing, and then gray and white. So this and uh, I, I don't I, see I don't it. Know, do you do you think this comes from the Shepherd Fairy thing, or is it just a uh, simple, complete graphics? And certainly made in Illustrator. Same concept. And, yeah, nice and simple, and the presidential image. Who is she Shepherd Sperry? You said. Shepard Ferry is a graphic uh, designer. Well, he's a street artist too. He's a street artist, graphic designer. He's been doing, he used, I used to see his work in New York around the uh, Soho and East Village painted on, on walls. He did a lot of stencil art at that time. Um, always figurative type things or, or slogans. And, and then he, and he's always done work like that, but he's, became super famous when he did the Obama poster mm. and has always uh, done, well, he's always done famous people because he always did all of the musicians too from uh, that were um, playing at CBGB's in New York and, and the, the standard, the Ramones, the, uh, um, um, what was her name? Uh, Deborah Ferry. Was it Deborah Ferry? No, Deborah from, uh, God, I can't remember. Harry. Deborah Harry, yeah. Deborah Harry, yeah. Yeah. Deborah so Harry. all of all of those people from that period of time, he all of the famous people, Iggy Pop and and, and people like that. He did all of their portraits, similar, not quite like the Obama thing, because there's a lot more texture. But he was always doing more political things. Um, people who were who were uh, outcast and downtrodden. Did you feed the dogs? No. So, um, you know, so interesting about that presidential image is that Reagan and Obama are looking in one direction. Kennedy is looking directly at you and Trump is looking in completely different direction. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a nice, simple, um, but it is about I, uh, looking away. Well, those are probably, do you think that it's, that it's probably the, the best images they could find and just the way yeah. they arrange them? Or do yeah. you think they, this is consciously looking away, that, that Reagan's looking off to the left and Trump is looking off to the right and Obama's looking off to the left too. And then Kennedy's kind of, he could be, yeah, he is looking at us. He's not really looking at the right, is he? Yeah, I don't think that they're the best photos that you could have taken or used. Um, so I don't know if it was intentional or not. It's just interesting. What's also interesting about them is the use of the gray, that they grayed out the, um, the reds and they, they toned them down, but they also inserted grays into the backgrounds of the stripes mm -hmm. in some of them, like yep. in both of them, like behind Trump and behind Obama and even behind Reagan. So it, it also ties into the value tone that they're using in their faces because it's only a three color poster or three color print mm -hmm. where you have white and red, blue, I guess it's four color, uh, white, red, and blue and gray. And it's all the same value tone gray. Like the, the stripes or the stars behind Reagan, if they were white, they would be contrasting with his face. So they left them all gray. And then they turn white as they're crossing over this, this edge Yep. And the stripes go gray. So it's really, it is a sophisticated picture. And they did think about a lot of the imagery and the way they were transferring those, those colors, value tones, and shapes across this whole picture. So it wasn't, it's not like they just took four squares and put them together. It's actually four squares that work together. And then of course you have the line work in between too, where it breaks down mm -hmm. into um, different kinds of textures from solid to, to uh, gradated by lines rather than by gradation. I was gonna pop this one up because I thought this one was good. Whoops, where'd he go? Did I just lose him? The Smith? No, oh, I don't know. I clicked it twice and it disappeared getting too anxious yeah where'd it go that was nice because there was no face in it it was empty hmm. so let's just go back and see if i can find it again yeah here it is oh wow 
So this is John Smith and just a blank empty. The, you can see the suit, you can see the tie and no face and no hair or anything. Hmm. Um, so a completely different kind of concept on what a campaign poster might be. I always think of that as the Smiths, but you know, I don't know. And then this one's kind of interesting too, because it's not another, it's not a person, it's an event or mm -hmm. a, a concept. So it doesn't have to be a person. It's not vote for me. It's a campaign poster for any kind of campaign. You can make more than one of them. It's okay. I wonder how these would work too. Yeah, see with the photographs, with well, the ones with the straight photographs, this is not so great. They don't have the same kind of quality about them. This is not very appealing. It's not that I, the, the woman doesn't look good or anything like that. It's that the graphics around the woman are better than just popping a, a photograph in there. Because mm. the photograph looks dead compared to the graphics. The graphics are much more interesting. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so when, but you know, and they, those other pictures, when we were looking at the, uh, the four presidents, those are all done in illustrator because you're, you're using, uh, the option to, to alter photographs and change them into value tones there. You can do that in illustrator. I don't think you can do that in InDesign. So you would have to do that in Illustrator first and then save it. And then that would be your document and then insert that document into InDesign, which is really what InDesign is all about because it's all about arranging stuff, not making stuff. You make stuff in the other programs in Illustrator and Photoshop, and then you arrange them in InDesign or in uh, Dreamweaver if you're doing web pages and stuff. Um, let's see this one. This and this is okay compared to to the one with the photograph in it, the color photograph of the girl. If it was a black and white photograph, that would have worked a lot better. But because it was a color photograph, it didn't work in inside those graphics. And this works okay because they're black and white photographs. They look weird. They look like their heads have been cut <laughs> off and they're floating around. So it's really a silly looking picture, but as it's a graphic, it bizarre. works okay. It is bizarre, isn't it? It looks like little floating heads. <laughs> I mean, they- They look like they've, they've been decapitated and they're- They're like balloons. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could easily see this on a balloon and whoever did the graphic- Because this was, this was done, what, in the 60s? So this was probably top-notch graphics at the time in the 1960s this is the this was number one graphic stuff for the the best they could get and it looks now you look at it you go this looks like uh, laurel and hardy <laughs> but at the time that was probably really sophisticated <laughs> but and and the photographs are actually pretty good and they did alter the photographs graphically because of the shadows and stuff so they enhanced them which you can do, they could do in photography at the time as well, but, and graphic, they would probably do it at what, uh, two color printing, three color printing for that, even four color printing of the, of the graphics. Is there anything else in here? This one looks weird. This is kind of interesting because they turned him into like a um, 19th century etch etching or early 20th century etching because that's all line work in there. For his for the value tones that they drew in there it's all you can see the little lines going across the face it's not a photograph or it was a photograph but they converted it into something else and that's 1992 so that would have been 30 years ago which this, one was that the the stand by the president oh, one oh, looking at oh, i see and you, uh, can you see that? Do I have to enlarge? Yeah, yeah, I, I can, can see the I lines. Can move, move the faces. Oh yeah, but you can see the lines in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what I was talking about. And this one is kind of like a shepherd fairy thing in a weird way, with the lines behind it. So they're borrowing those same ideas right now, and incorporating them into a, a campaign poster for their own uh, for themselves. 
and it's got pretty good graphics in it. This weird stuff with the leaves and stuff around it, if that's what that is, that looks kind of odd, um, but interesting in a way, unusual. And I, and I would leave it off. I would have just gone with that part. Um, is there more? Because here's <laughs> stay and finish the job. I want you, FDR. This, <laughs> he's the old, isn't he the only president that had ever been elected four times? And then they changed the law after that. They made a new law saying you it can did. only have two mm -hmm. sessions. Mm -hmm. He died in office, I think. Yeah, he was elected four times. Um, but anyway, another, but he used, this is from that period of time from the, the 1930s and 40s. And, uh, and this is the kind of imagery that was used. This is an interesting, just a simple group of them with a, a vote and come together, simple graphic type things that don't have anything to do with electing somebody, just getting uh, motivating people. This one's weird, kind of, to me. Mm -hmm. Because that's, <laughs> you know, it's almost like the Shepherd Fairy thing, but it becomes too washed out a little bit. But he did, I mean, even there's a glow with the lines coming out behind his head, which gives him a sense of halo and, and, uh, uh, spirituality, I guess, um, um, a deity, godish. Can you say Godish? I don't know if Godish is a word. Scottish, Godish. Mm -hmm. We saw that logo that somebody did with the whiskey. Those guys are Godish and Scottish. Okay, so you guys got the idea? Yes. This is an interesting one with uh, um, just black and white again. And, I, and I'm guessing that used to be probably a, a really bright white, but now the white has faded into a pink. But black and white photograph, and it's weird the way they do the cropping. They did the same thing on the one that was uh, with the floating heads, that they isolated them and they don't look very natural because they cut them off. Yeah. But that's, that's what happened at that time. Yeah, this guy, he has the same thing, the cut off things. But interesting, I mean, this looks like Shepard Fairey type of graphics with the White House and stuff, but he needs to have rays coming out of it. Although here they put in little lines for clouds to tell you that that's sky. And you can see that this is old because it's all wrinkled up. Now, the, I do, all I did to get this stuff, I just went to Google and looked up campaign, political campaign posters. So you can obviously do the same thing. And if you put in a, uh, a cue for something specific in a campaign, you're going to get a whole set of different posters. Like, what's this one? Famous. Oh, those are just famous posters. I thought it was going to be famous people. Okay. So, what else would you like to do while we're here? I'm done with posters. I'm kind of bored with this now. I want to make them. I don't want to so, see. So, that's the minor one to do. Yeah. Uh, when is this one due? Uh, the 14th of April. Okay. The campaign, because it's telling me, because again, the calendar is me, like this Saturday? Not this Saturday. That's next Saturday. That's what, that's yeah, what the, the, the calendar told me. Wait, can't we, well, you mean our, our Canvas meeting? No, the calendar. Oh, on the calendar, it's on the 14th. It's on, um, that's a Thursday. But, but it'll be open, it'll extend till Saturday. I'm just saying it's due on the 14th, but you have until Saturday to complete it. Okay. Okay, I guess. Actually, let me, I just want to show you that, that I, I, I actually in, in the book. Say it again. I just want to let you know that I can't do anything right now because I'm, I'm in the power outage. Right, no, I know, I got gotcha. you, I understand. You're okay. You're making a phone call. Oh, professor. You. professor? Yes. It shows that the campaign poster is due on Saturday. Yeah, I'm going to change that. Okay. So because, because of, of uh, and when I made this, I wasn't even thinking about, um, about spring break. 
Oh, spring break, going, that's right. Mm -hmm. And that's what's throwing us off. And okay, whoever's got whoever's phone that is, hang up. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So I will go change that. Okay, somebody needs to mute. Do I have to mute them? Are you guys all hearing that? Yes. Yeah. No, it's not just me. Good. No, nope, not just you. But everybody else is on mute. So where's it coming from? My phone's not ringing. It's not mine. Not mine. So I don't know where that was coming from. Um, okay. So uh, anything else that we want to do tonight? Say yes or no. I'm good. No. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm fine. Okay. Well, um, but and you. I worry understand? about the game power outage. <laughs> right. You are. You're having a power outage. You're in trouble, Victor. But hopefully that gets fixed. Where do you live, Victor? Can't hear me. Like, like. What do you mean? What do you mean? Where do I live? Where, well, where's your power? Where, where is, where is there no power in the city? You live in in Los Angeles, right? Are we? Is there a fire or something? Because sometimes there are, and those, uh, those, um, what are those things called? Transformers. They get, they get blow up. I've seen them do that in Spark. If someone blows one up, then there's a power outage for the whole system or whole area. Anyway, regardless, um, what should we be doing? Going to work and designing? We should be designing and assembling things. You should be collecting pictures or, or creating text because you don't really have to collect pictures like I showed you some of those examples that were just text. And all you have to do is come up with a theme or something that you choose to do. And you know, it doesn't have to be super uh, political because, well, there's so many things that are political now. I mean, there's so much, everything's political. It seems like gender is huge issues, LBGTQ, homelessness, all of that stuff. All of those things are open territory for doing any of these things. It doesn't have to be someone running for office. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, if you take um, just a regular piece of InDesign, just a regular paper, and Paint. you yeah. and, and you take a um, you click the line and you go from one corner to the other. How do you get the edges of the line to not show up? Well, um, uh, I'm trying to figure out what you're asking me. What do you mean? Yeah, sure. you, so, so you're drawing a, a diagonal line to divide the the piece of paper in two. Yep. And you don't want to see the line in the middle of the paper, or you don't no, want to on, see the, on the, the corners. Tips. You don't on want to corners. see the tips. Correct on the corners. Okay, so you would drag them right off the the uh, page. If you were if you were going to do a bleed. And you were going to print this thing, you would, the fastest thing you would do, knowing that they're not going to print and they're not going to show up, you would drag them right off the page. So oh, and it wouldn't look, matter. And it wouldn't matter. But if you want them to be look, to look beautiful and pretty, you can bring those because uh, you're going to the corners. So they're going to be at a, a point, right? So you can either round them by choosing on the, um, the stroke palette, you have options where you can choose the tip of the line, if you go oh. through those, so some of them can be rounded, some of them can be sharp edged or sharp in the middle. They could be a corner. So you'll have a sharp corner as if you were drawing a square. Um, there's other, there's five or six different options there that you can choose on the stroke palette to, to yeah. end for the tip of your line. None of those work. Can I share my screen really quick? Yeah, go ahead. Really, really quick. None, you mean they didn't work at all for, for filling out your line? No. You see? Yeah. I see your line. And you see, I see it square coming off. So, okay, just, just to let you know, if you drag that further off, that's not going to print because it's, all, it's off your paper. 
which right, is but if fine. I'm, It'll crop right at the corner. But if I submit it like this, it's not going to look right. In. Right. So what do you? So what are your options on your stroke palette? Oh, I got to make you guys move. That's okay. We don't mind moving. Just grab oh. us and throw us down the hill. Stroke. Yeah. See, you have different kinds of tips there. So uh, right now you're on the align stroke. So maybe the on the where it says join. Well, no, because you're not joining them. Um, oh, align stroke to inside. Yeah. So see, if, well, that's only going to be that's a, that'll follow your um, your edge. Uh, the way the fastest way to get rid of that, if you wanted it like that, if you want to make it clean, so because you're thinking about presenting it to us, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, the gray background is that is the where the grid is is that just a gray background with no color that's the outside of the page yeah okay so i would just make a gray box that color or, or two gray um oh you, and just go up along the edge and drop them right on top on both sides yep okay Thank because, you. because what we're talking about is is just creating a visual sensibility now, like I said, if you were if you were going to print this and you would just drag that right off the page and you wouldn't think twice about it because it would be off the page and it would not print. The only part that anybody would ever see was where it comes to a point at where the right where the corner comes together. Okay. Would it show up on a PDF? Yes, well, it'll show up. It'll show up like this on a PDF. Oh. Okay. But but the but the difference is when if you go to print it you're telling the printer that this is the size of it and you're you're not doing a bleed or you're bleeding it to the edge and this goes beyond the edge just because it'll get cropped right off okay but that's a good question because if it came out just as the page would it yeah that's a good question okay thank you i'm going to stop sharing yeah but yeah but you could also do the thing where i said is for our purposes to and even if you wanted to show it to a client or something, you just drop those uh, two rectangles of gray on top of that, the white, and you won't see them. Perfect. It, Perfect. It's just a different way of masking. And, Thank and you. probably it's a backwards way of doing it, but that's the way I think. Because I always think backwards and frontwards at the same time. And I just go, you know, whatever works the fastest, the way to solve the problem, that's the way you should solve it. It'll work and yeah. that's perfect. Thank that's, you. That's all you need to do. You're welcome. Professor Arata, is it all right if I sign off to try yeah, to yeah. see if I, I guess can get so, you to design? Yeah, no, I'm, well, I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna do anything um, special because everybody knows how to put a picture in there. Really, this is about content now and arranging all of your design material. Yeah. I mean, I can't, yeah, there's nothing specific that I can show you technique wise that I think will make a difference. Okay. Before I leave, can I just check with you? Did you get a message from me about a computer question? If not, I can resend it. Is it in the chat? Is it in the chat or is it in my email? No, no, I sent my... it to you a couple of days ago. Is it in the canvas? Because um, you send I sent through... it to you from my email. Uh, okay, I'll to check your the email, but usually I get um, communications through Canvas through the the inbox. I oh, mean, so that's better. Yeah, because I answer those all the time, every okay. day. I'm like, no, okay, I'll resend it then. Okay. All Do right it. then. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. Uh, um, does anybody else have any questions or anything you want to go over? No. Okay. So we're good to go. So we did uh, like about two hours and uh, almost two and a half hours of lecture. So now you're supposed to have your two hours of, of um, lab time. Fine. That's yep. what you're here for. Go create stuff, make stuff, but you should spend more than two hours doing this <laughs> <laughs> because you'll okay. get better at it. You'll get better <laughs> at it. You'll get faster. All okay. right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so we won't see each other till the 14th of April. Oh, oh wait, no, 14th. Bye. Isn't that right? Because today, let me go to the calendar. 
Hold Today on. is the 31st, yeah. right? And then and then we have a week off. Uh, spring breaks begins on, on the 3rd. So we don't have class all the way to the 9th. So we, on the 7th, we won't see each other, but we'll see each other on the 14th. No, on the 10th, oh, right? Wow. Right. All right. Too long? You want to meet on the 7th instead? Oh, wait. Now I just had no idea it was that far away. Okay. I know. Isn't that crazy? Because it's two weeks from now. Well, why don't we meet on the 10th? What is the reason for that? It's Palm Sunday? No, it's Thursday. Wait, on April, there, that's not the 10th. Oh, 10. April. I'm looking at March. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there there okay, you go. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. Well, Enjoy your spring break. Well, so here's the question then: Is that too long? Do you, do you guys want to meet again on uh, on the seventh? We don't. I can send out an announcement. We'll do that. I I don't think I could on the seventh. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't matter to me because I'm probably not going anywhere for spring break. I'm just going to okay. be I'm going to be doing grading papers and working in the studio, and uh, I have no else, no idea. Maybe maybe work around the house. I'm not going out of town. I'm not going to Miami. Well, enjoy yourself. Uh, I always enjoy myself. Don't That's you? a good thing. It is a good thing. <laughs> we were just assigned a paper we have to do for English during well, our spring break. I was like, no, oh, no. Well, yeah, but it, what kind of class is it? Is it a on-campus class or is it a- No, uh, it, no it's it, an online class, uh, English composition. But if it's asynchronous, then they can do that. But if it's if it's a Zoom meeting class like this that's scheduled, they can't do that. Uh, OK, because I am doing the same thing with my art history classes. They have to do work, too. They have a midterm, actually, during spring break. Oh, wow. Well, it's just because I don't know. It just happened that way. And, and my life class has that, too, because they're both asynchronous classes. So anything that meets in person has spring break i know it's crazy i didn't make up these rules but this is the way i understand it's it how it be. is it's how all my classes have been i've always had work during breaks always yeah, yeah. yeah. well when they're asynchronous i think that's and they've what, all been asynchronous yeah so that's what people what they do because there's i don't i don't know why i mean, some people i actually think take it off i think they say we're not having class but uh, I haven't I mean, had a professor like that yet. So others don't. Well, well, here's I the other the other thing that the, the positive thing about having it during um, doing work during spring break is you can end your semester a week early. You could have you, you could oh. you can give the final a week early and have two weeks for people to do it, which is a little bit more relaxing, I think. That's nice. Yeah, I think at least that's the way I look at it. I'm hoping it goes that I like that. Way. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So uh, did you want to meet it next week or not? Any of you? You don't care. You're not going to be there, Gene. No. He's not going to be there. Nobody else is saying yes. So I'm no, ambivalent. Nobody, nobody ever talks. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> doesn't matter to me. Work. All right. Well, if I send out an announcement, you can come and uh, I will be Victor, there. If you send if an announcement. Victor, I might do it for. I might just um, meet with him so I can solve his problems. Oh, that's a good idea. OK. Yeah. OK. Have a Speak great good. rest of your week and weekend and enjoy your spring break. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You too. Enjoy your spring break. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Guys. All right. I'm ending the meeting. Have a good one, you guys. Take care. Be safe. Don't get COVID. You, you too. Bye-bye. I'm not going to. Bye. <laughs>